Let's talk about product development, virtual product development to be exact. So this is the big thing right now. Um, people leveraging online options to do online coaching, provide eBooks, online games, uh, mobile apps, um, graphic design and development. This is just an area that's been exploding over the last five or six years, especially. So there are a lot of strengths, there's weaknesses, and there's a lot of opportunities and threats on this one. And this is a big area. Strengths, low barrier to entry, right? The world is flat. The technology's there, the connections are there. It's easy to get in, use different systems for fairly low cost or even free. Um, so if you know anything and you want to share it, you can package it up and offer it to people anywhere in the world. So it's a fast route to gaining high client numbers. Along with this comes risks though, right? Because the more this relies on your online presence, anything that goes wrong with that online presence um, reduces trust with your customer base. So one of the key areas that many people that are making a go of it on their own do not realize is that large companies have dealt with this for a long time, and that's service level agreements. When you call or you email someone with an issue with their website, with their service, you're expecting them to respond in a certain amount of time. And a lot of um, startups in the virtual product development don't realize this is a huge area um, for building trust with your clients. And so if you don't respond quickly, or if you don't respond at all, that's a huge deal breaker. I have already stopped purchasing from certain people online because of their poor customer service. They're out there doing so much marketing that they're not realizing that some of us aren't getting answers to our questions. And because of that, we are no longer buying. And in many cases, people are actively telling others not to buy from them as well because they can't get responses or they can't get help for technical issues or for a question they have about the product or service. Um, and that's one of the weaknesses of online product development. Often people are so worried about getting more and more and more clients, they don't realize that if they're not keeping the ones they have or could have happy, um, then all is lost. And you have to care about each client because you have some of us that are willing to spend a lot of money if we like the product, we like the customer service, we're going to keep buying. But if we don't, we will not. Um, we will go elsewhere. Uh, in these cases, too, there's, there can be a high ratio of customers to profit, so you might not be making that much per customer, so you're going to have to go offline to get the really big bucks with these customers. So if you're offering ebooks, and it's great to sell a ton of ebooks, but remember, if you're only getting a certain dollar amount per customer and any customer have issues, that kind of elevates your cost because your cost for maintaining the customer is higher than if you have bigger, more expensive offerings, and um, you can kind of absorb that cost a little easier. So that's something to think about. That's also a personality thing. If you want tons and tons of interactions and customers, that the more customers you have, the more opportunities for communication um, to take place. Or if you're someone that would rather do a great job and go deep with a few customers and earn all of your money from a, a few customers. And that's often more what consultants do. They want to have a couple of customers that they continually earn from. In this area, though, there's unlimited opportunities for growth. You can work anywhere in the world. You can offer to anywhere in the world. Um, you can have expansive networks and relationships, and you can just unleash your creativity. This is a great thing. Um, but now a lot of people are all using the same approach. So I know every website I go to, I put my email in and I get my little chain of emails from them, um, which in the learning world, we call that spaced learning. And in you know, the other world, they call it drip marketing, whatever. Um, the bottom line, though, is so many people are doing it that pretty soon when everybody's doing it, it becomes generic and you have to find other ways to capture people's attention. Uh, another thing is that there are some creative people in the BRIC countries. And BRIC countries, B-R-I-C, are Brazil, Russia, India, and China. They have figured out how to do things cheaper, faster, and better. So they, a lot of them will be taking some of this content and repackaging it and offering it in different ways and making money. And they can offer it for cheaper because it costs them less to produce it.
is in less load. So these are things to think about in this area. This is a hot area. It'll continue to grow, but I would suggest that you have to do some things against the grain going forward because everyone's starting to use the exact same approach.